Hello well wishers and welcome to my channel Aspiring Minds. In today's video we are going to do a detailed stanza wise explanation, summary and analysis of a famous metaphysical poem written by John Donne called The Sun Rising. So grab your virtual seats and let's begin this poetic journey. Now what is metaphysical poetry? It is a literary movement that emerged or began in the 17th century in England. What are its characteristics? You can see a lot of intellectual and philosophical exploration of complex themes, structures which were new and unconventional and metaphysical poetry is often associated with a group of poets who shared similar ideas styles and themes. The four most important poets that come to our mind when we read about metaphysical poetry or we use the term metaphysical poetry is John Donne. John Donne specifically used or explored the theme of love and religion in his poems. The poem is divided into three stanzas. In the first stanza, the speaker addresses the sun by personifying it or calling it a busy old fool and an unruly sun that is the sun does not know how to behave. He is questioning the sun that why are you disturbing us, why dost thou thus, why are you disturbing us and why are you invading the privacy of the lovers by shining through the curtains and asking the lovers to wake up. The speaker then tells that the sun can do one thing that is it can go and disturb and bother other people and who are these people that he can disturb? Go chide late school boys, that is go and disturb the school boys or the apprentices, the boys who are still taking training in schools and colleges. They are the ones who should wake up early, so go and disturb them. Or other thing that you can do is announce the activities of the king. He then asserts that love is not bound by seasons or the geographic locations or even by the divisions of time. Love is something that is eternal. It is everlasting. It is not affected by days, hours or months. Therefore, the sun can go and disturb others and let the lovers be and prolong their time that they are spending together now. In stanza 2, we see the speaker questions the self-importance that the sun gives to itself, stating that the speaker can easily overshadow the rays of the sun by a mere blink of eye, that is, if the person can just shut his eyes or even blink the eyes, the rays of the sun will no longer disturb the person. However, he refrains from doing so because he does not want to lose the sight of the beloved even for a moment. If the lover will have to shut down his eyes in order to prevent the sunlight from falling into its eyes, at the same time it will also stop the lover from having a sight of the beloved, so therefore it rejects this idea. He then challenges the sun to see if it has it has been blinded by the radiance of the lover's eyes. Now this is a very exaggerated statement. He says that my lover's beauty is so much, it ref she reflects so much light that her radiance it seems is brighter than the light of the sun. He then playfully suggests that the entire wealth of the East Indies, that is the spices and minerals of India could be found in this bed where the lovers are lying down right now. This idea is that love and intimacy can contain a sense of richness that is beyond material wealth and thou shalt hear all here in one bed lay, that is, if lovers are in love and they are deeply in love with each other the bed is a place where the lovers unite and at the same time the wealth of that relationship is far more than any kind of material wealth it gives them a sense of completeness In stanza 3, we see the speaker giving a very high position, a very high degree of regard and respect to the lover. He 
says that my lover is above all the states and princes suggesting that she is the epitome of everything that is meaningful to him she is the most important thing that has ever existed in his life he dismisses the importance of worldly honors and wealth he does not want material wealth he does not want to be conferred with any kind of important titles he is comparing this kind of wealth to mere playthings in comparison to love that is he is giving love the utmost priority the speaker then tells that the son that it is only half as happy as they are because the world has shrunk to their intimate space he reminds the son that its duty is to warm the world and by warming them in their bed he fulfills the purpose the speaker concludes by saying that their bed is the center of the universe and the walls of the room are like the sun's sphere implying that their love is the center of attraction it is the focal of a focal point of their existence The poem explores the idea that true love is not confined by the limitations of time, place or any kind of worldly concerns or material aspects of life. The speaker and his beloved exist in a timeless and spaceless part of love where their connection, their relationship is the most important thing. Secondly the poem talks about being a critic of the sun the poem in a very humorous manner criticizes the sun for interrupting the intimate moment of the lovers the sun's importance and the grandeur of the sun is nearly dismissed by the speaker because they have been disturbed at a crucial moment in time and thirdly the poem deals with the theme of carpe diem that is while the poem celebrates the power of love to transcend time it also addresses that time flies away very quickly the speaker wants to make the most of the present moment and enjoy the love he shares with his beloved as long as it lasts So that's it from this video. I hope you liked it. Do hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel for more such future updates. Thank you for watching. Bye.